So, hello, I'm back. It's been a while since I made a video, but I'm making this one because today, right now, is the last day of February. So that means that midnight is officially the first of March, and March is Endometriosis Awareness Month. I am going to talk about endometriosis. All right, so what is it? So endometriosis is when the endometrial t like tissue, which is like the lining of the uterus, grows outside of the uterus in places like on the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, in your um, rectum, in your like wherever you urinate from, um, liver, kidney, not really sure which one. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's what it is in like just definition terms of it. Basically, it's really painful and it hurts. Um, why I'm talking about it is because I is I have not been officially diagnosed, but it's more than likely that's what's going on with me. I'm having surgery hopefully this year. I will be having an appointment this Wednesday, the 6th of March with my doctor to talk about um, some results on something I'll talk about in a little bit and then um, what the next step will be which will probably be surgery so we're going to talk about it when I was 11 Mrs. Mother Nature decided to come say hello and it was pretty early most I think it was the second girl in my class to uh, get her period and wasn't expecting to get it so soon. Um, most of the time when you're a petite person, I think it comes later than most people. Um, and I mean, I'm not really petite anymore, but when I was younger, I was pretty petite. When I was 11 years old, I was probably 80 pounds. So an 80 pound four, six, <laughs> Melanie got her period and it was very painful. I woke up in the middle of the night just screaming and crying in pain. I didn't know what was going on because I didn't expect it to come already and not like that. Uh, <laughs> when you take sex ed, they basically are like, oh, you're going to go to the bathroom and all of a sudden there's going to be something that's not normal down there and there you go it's your gift but no mine was hi i'm here to kill you um and it tried really hard <laughs> so i i drag myself upstairs um like this is when i wake up in the middle and i i drag myself from my bedroom downstairs to the upstairs where my parents bedroom is i get there start i just swing open the door i'm like I don't know what's going on, and then boom, just on the ground, pass out. My dad thinks my appendix was bursting because when I had walked in, I was like grabbing my side or just like my abdomen area. I mean, I don't know where our appendix is. And my mom thought I was having just a crazy nightmare and sleepwalking because I do sleepwalk. Um, they didn't really know what was going on. I wake up and I go to the restroom and I find out, oh, that's what it is. And just the rest of the night I just spent on the couch trying to fall asleep, but I couldn't. I think it took a Midol and some Tylenol and thought that it would make me feel better. Didn't. Um, <laughs> eventually I fell asleep because when you're in a lot of pain, you get tired. Um, so, yeah, I went to bed eventually. And that was the start. So I started just immediately always on time I had like just the perfect cycle it was always on time but the problem was it was like every single time like as soon as it started I'd be in so much pain that I would faint and like the last day I would be in so much pain that I would faint when I was on my period but then there was so many times that I would have abdominal pain um, on my like pelvic bone area um, were like my uterus um <laughs> like when I wasn't on my period but I never really thought anything of it I had mentioned it a couple times I was like oh it feels like I have a period cramp but I'm not on my period and people were like oh honey you're confusing that with a side cramp and that's just how like it was for a few years my parents um didn't necessarily believe that all the times that I was fainting was because of my period 
and being in pain. They kind of thought I was just being dramatic, because I mean, I am a, dra a drama queen, I guess. Um, and so, like, I understand, and it always seemed to come at a very inconvenient time, where it was like, oh, I was supposed to go to school that day, but I just was in so much pain and discomfort that going to school sounded like just, like, the longest most painful thing that I could do like when I'm in pain I don't want to communicate with people when I was younger I've kind of um, learned that I don't want the pain to get in the way of me like living my life um, like I mean I'm in pain right now so, go for a few years had a lot of pain a lot of the time um, didn't really know what to do and, I mean, I would take some Midol, wouldn't do really do much, I'd take some Tylenol. Um, I didn't really ever, like, know what to do. I tested out lots of different things. I took Advil, I took ibuprofen, I took ibuprofen plus, I put, took Tylenol, Tylenol severe, Midol, Midol for cramps, like, ibuprofen for menstrual, I don't, like, so many different things. I just took every kind of, like, over-the-counter pain medication I could really get my hands on. Um, I think, well, I mean, is my mom buying it? Because I don't think you're allowed to buy ibuprofen when you're young. I don't know if that's a thing or not. Um, anyway. Yeah, so, I would go all this time, and, yeah, so finally, I'm 13, and we're on a family vacation. And, um, we're in Tennessee. I remember being in quite a bit of pain a lot of this trip and not really wanting to do a whole lot. Time to drive back home to Nebraska and on the way we stopped in Nashville and there there was like a few places we want to see. At this place, it's like a museum. Um, it's some, some old mansion. Um, I don't know who lived there, who was important. I didn't really pay attention a whole lot. Um, but we were there. I was, we were outside on like the grounds of the house for a while and there was like a little like gift shop and we were in there basically waiting for our time for our tour because you had to like schedule the tour. There was like a group of us and there was like already a tour going on, only so many tour guides. Um, yeah. So basically we, uh, it's right when our time is supposed to come, I get the cramp again and I'm like, ugh, like I was having a good day so far. I mean, I was a little tired, but... You know, I was having a good day, and <sighs> I hate yawning. <laughs> and then, so we go inside, and I'm, I have this cramp, and I knew, I was like, ooh, like, usually every time I get a cramp, I pass out, or I don't want to stand, at least. Um, so, I'm sitting there, and then I start to feel some of the signs. When I'm about to pass out, it seems like my body temperature just, like, fluctuates all over the place. Like, I couldn't be cold and sweating, and then I'm just, like, super hot and sweating, and then I'm just, like, freezing and shivering, like, just up and down all over the place. And then, um, I start getting pretty dizzy, I get a little nauseous, and then my vision goes, and then usually I'm out cold. And so, I'm sitting there, and I start feeling like this. I grab my dad, and I'm like, hey, like, I think I'm going to pass out. And like I said, my parents, this whole couple years, they never believed me when I said I was passing out. Because they always thought that it was because I was just using it as, like, a way to get out of things. So, like, just like a kid pretending to be sick with a cold to get out of going to school. Like, that's what they thought, but I was just being more dramatic with it, saying I'm passing out. So my dad wasn't very happy with me he was like are you like before he could even scold me down just straight flat on my face like just forward because <laughs> I was holding on to him because I knew I was gonna fall over but he just let go of me because he, he was not happy and my I guess I wasn't really listening to the tour guide but my mom said that he was literally talking about how the place was haunted so my mom thought I was pretending to get um like possessed by a ghost which is really funny that she thought that because I would so be something I would do um <laughs> and so they get me a chair and I'm sitting there for a little while um they are like okay like I don't think you should probably do the rest of the tour I'm like yeah probably not um so we decide to leave um and my dad's helping me outside and I pass out again so I'm laying there and I wake up to my mom pouring water in my mouth and 
don't do that <laughs> if you've never taken any kind of like a CPR class or anything basically don't ever pour water in someone who is passed out because they'll like choke on it or drown or something and so I'm like waking up just coughing up this water and I'm coughing it onto this woman that I've never met before. She's just literally on top of me, waving like a granola bar in one hand and a Gatorade in the other, and like shoving them in my face, like screaming, like, you have to eat, you have to eat, you have to eat. The tour guide, <laughs> he had called 911, so an ambulance was on the way. I had not wanted, I just didn't want to go. I was like, no, I'm not going to the hospital. Like, I've never been to this state, let alone this big city let alone their hospital like that just sounded terrible and like I just wanted to go lay down in the car because I mean I had passed out so many times before in my life I was like I know what I need to do like I just need to go lay down and go to bed and I'll be good <laughs> like um that's what I always did if I was in pain I just went to bed and that's that so we get to the car and a police officer has to come because I guess if you cancel like an ambulance they have to send a police officer. And then I think he had to like confirm that my parents were my parents because he thought I was being like abducted or something. So then we get back to Nebraska from our vacation and we decide to set up a doctor's appointment and we go. The doctor didn't really seem very interested in helping me. She pretty much was like, oh, well, you're like a petite person, you're small, you're on your period, you're gonna have cramps, that's just what it is. And then she was like, you could get on birth control and try to like not have a period, but I'm literally in eighth grade, so it was like, that didn't sound like something I needed to do. And then she was like, well, you can take like, you know, ibuprofen or mydol. I was like, oh, whoa, never heard, never thought about that. Um, and so she ended up like <laughs> scheduling me an ultrasound I think she just did that to make it seem like she was trying to help us we went to this ultrasound the tech basically was like oh you got a big uterus like <laughs> good for you I don't know what that means like ooh, comparing sizes <laughs> of uteruses um <laughs> so we never heard anything about the results from that never had any kind of a follow-up just knew that I had a big uterus um so that was cool and then I went so many years just being completely dependent on ibuprofen because I after I had tried all those different kinds of pain meds I decided um, ibuprofen was really the only one that really worked that much and you can take 600 milligrams every six hours and I did that almost every single day I was on ibuprofen all the time I had it on me at all times and there was one time I remember that I was just in a lot of pain again a family vacation <laughs> and I was just in a lot of pain and I just kind of forgot when the next time was that I was allowed to take ibuprofen so I started taking it more frequently I don't know I think I realized I was taking um, a lot I just was taking too much that week and I ended up overdosing on it um, I was okay I just threw up a lot and um, used the restroom frequently and I just didn't really do that much on that vacation and then I just continued to take ibuprofen even though I did that and I was like I don't know like you know my liver's not doing well but that's okay because neither is my uterus yeah I went through high school just lots of days being in pain going to the nurse asking for a heating pad lying down being like in class and just like out of nowhere feeling like I was gonna faint and I just kind of put my head down and like tried to fall asleep in class. I came to college my first semester and uh, dur so during my first semester I think the pain got a lot worse. It was to the point that I realized that it was, I was in a lot of pain when I wasn't on my period as well as on my period. I was in a lot of pain and there was like a couple times that I was in class here and I just got up and left because I mean at least in college you can leave if you don't feel good. I mean you could in high school, I could go to the nurse's office but like I don't want to go to a nurse, I just want to go to my bed. Like 
that's what I want when I'm in pain. I just want my bed. I don't want anything else. My bed or like a bathtub with hot water in it. And that's just how it is. Finally was like, all right, if this is how painful it is, that I'm missing classes, having to leave class, I should probably think about going back to a doctor because yeah, I had a horrible experience that, that first time, but I think it's time to go. So I was planning on it, but then I kind of just like put that to rest. I was like, I don't want to worry about it right now. I want to focus on school. I'll worry about it later. Um, well, January comes and it's the start of a new semester and I'm watching Hulu and a commercial comes on for Speak Endo. That was the first time I ever heard about what endometriosis was. I watched that commercial, it was listing a bunch of symptoms, and I just literally just like checked them off. I was like, I got this one, I got this one, I got this one, I got this one. Just all of them. Literally every single one. And I was like, well, shoot, maybe that's what I got. <laughs> and so I called the doctor's office and I said, hey, um, I saw this commercial. And I have a lot of the symptoms. I know you shouldn't like believe everything on like the internet or the TV or whatever. But I, I do believe I need to come in because I do have all these symptoms. And if it's not this, it's there's something going on. Like it shouldn't I shouldn't be in this much pain and um, fainting all the time. And on the phone, she sounded very worried. She was like, "Well, if you're fainting, I don't know if you should drive to the doctor." I was like, "Well, what am I supposed to do?" <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so I finally go to the doctor and she asks me all these questions. She's so thorough and she like writing everything down. I was so appreciative. She just, she really wanted to know everything. And she brought up things that I didn't hear from the commercial, but they made a lot of sense. And then she like went into detail into explaining why she asked what questions. And um, she was like, oh, have you ever heard of endometriosis? I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I have actually, <laughs> and I think that's what I have, and she's like, oh, me too. <laughs> um, but the only way you can diagnose it is with surgery, and she didn't really want to, like, just that be the first option to do is just do a surgery. She was like, you know, maybe we can see if we can alleviate some of the pain and come back to doing surgery later on, because surgery's a big deal, like, you know, I'm just like, oh, she needs surgery, woohoo. It's, you know, you gotta, like, think about it, plan it out, um, and, like, there's recovery times and scheduling and you have to find the right doctors to do it and all this, so, like, I was very happy that that wasn't the first thing she said was, oh, we're gonna do surgery, lay down, I'm gonna cut you open, um, <laughs> but she did tell me to lay down, we did a pap smear, and <laughs> in the pap smear, she wanted to make sure that she didn't feel any cysts. Which, um, I don't remember, like, being in pain or anything for this pap smear, um, which is good. Um, it was very uncomfortable and super weird, but that's typical. Uh, and then we went ahead and we inserted the Nexpanon implant in my arm right here. And for the first few months, like, it worked pretty okay. Um, it kind of sucks because you just kind of bleed for a few months straight while your body's getting used to it and um, you don't really have a cycle anymore and it's just a lot of hormonal changes it does cause a lot of acne but it was it was helping the pain some and that's all I can ask for is something to make me feel somewhat better well it worked for a while and I don't know if it just like stopped working or my body rejected it I don't know but by September so I, this was in April when it was placed and then by September I just was in enough pain again that I felt like I needed to call and at this time it was like a different kind so the first time it was kind of like a like just a dull like not like it's not dull I don't know how to it's like it feels like just so much weight is in your uterus and it's just like pulling you down like it's like an anchor and you're just like <sighs> and it's just very and then it also feels like it's contracting a lot that was like one of like the old original pain that I would feel all the time and 
that would make me pass out. Um, so I hadn't been passing out, but I was back to being in pain frequently. This pain was different. The new one in September, it felt like someone was stabbing me with a knife from my vagina. Like, all the time. And it would hurt so bad. It just, like, this, like, sharp, just, <laughs> and then gone. Like, just really quick. And it would be so painful that I would, like, one day I was literally sitting in class and it happened. And I flinched so hard I broke my pencil. Like, I just was... Ow. Like, it just hurt so bad. And I would just, like, tumble over in pain. It would just hurt so bad and be so quick and sudden and then be gone. But there were some days that I almost had, like, aftershocks where it was, like, it would hurt. And then, like, five minutes later it would hurt again. And then it would, and then it would hurt again. <laughs> it was just very strange. So I called and I tried to like, I mean it's really hard to explain that pain. Like I feel like you guys probably don't understand what the heck I was just saying there. Because it's just like, it was a very confusing, weird thing. And I couldn't really explain it well to my doctor. So basically they gave me estradiol, which is, I guess, like a birth control pill form. Um, so I was taking that for a month. They gave me one month of it. And it was also supposed to help me, like, regulate, because at this point I was still bleeding every day. Um, or at least spotting, mostly. Like, the last week of January, I went back to my gynecologist because I decided there was enough waiting, because it had been almost a year, and I was pretty much back to where I had been, just not fainting completely like I used to. I, like... There was times I felt faint, but I didn't actually faint. But when I was in high school, I would feel faint and then faint. So that was the only difference is everything else was the same, but I wouldn't actually completely faint. So that just meant that the pain lasted longer because it almost seemed like I would faint. And then when I came to, the pain was still there, but it was better than it was before I fainted. So now it was just like the pain didn't get better because I wasn't fainting. We talked and she did another exam where she went in and she just like a pap smear. Um, and she, there's like pressure points on the inside of your vagina, I guess is what, how I would describe them. And she pressed like a few of them while she was in there. And it was the most excruciating pain I have ever experience and I've been in a lot of pain a lot of my life but this was terrible it hurt so bad I've never I would ugh. she like the whole time I was just trying so hard not to scream and cry like punch her in the face because I wanted to stop doing it um like I was just grabbing on to the table and I felt like I almost was just like gonna rip the table because I was holding on to it so hard Finally, we got done with that. She decided I have really just weak pelvic floor muscles, I guess. Or, I mean, I forgot what exactly she said. But basically, my pelvic floor muscles hurt a lot. And they trigger a lot of pain in other places. And then she again brought up the idea of endometriosis. And said, I think it's time we start thinking about surgery. Or you could do like a pelvic floor physical therapy, but that's not gonna like help on the like whatever is going on with your uterus. If like if it is endometriosis, pelvic floor physical therapy is not like the proper way of doing that, like surgery is. Um, so she recommended both, but in the meantime, she wanted to do a transvaginal ultrasound um, but she wouldn't do it it would be another lady who is like more experienced with that and so I came back a couple weeks after that initial one and we did the transvaginal which um, transvaginal means it goes inside for the ultrasound and that was pretty uncomfortable hurt quite a bit um, it wasn't as bad as the pop smear pressure point thing that she did um, two weeks before, but this lady, um, a different, okay, wasn't as, ugh, the damn fan's back, so, yeah, I did that, 
and the further she went in, it was the closer to my ovaries. And the closer she got to those, oof, that hurt. Just, there was just a point where it was like, okay, this is tolerable, it's very uncomfortable, super weird to pass that point, and I was just in a lot of pain. And um, I was watching the screen, trying to like keep my focus on that rather than the discomfort. And I was looking at the screen, and I remember just sitting there, I was like, okay, I see a lot of circles, but which one, like, what are those? Like, which one's my ovary? Like, what's going on? She pointed it out, and she basically was like, all right, this is your ovary, and all these circles are cysts that are growing on your ovaries. And, um, yeah, that's why it was very painful the closer she got to those. And all those times that I kind of felt that, like, um, there's like an explosion type feeling. There's probably a cyst bursting. I was supposed to have an appointment with my my doctor like a week later to talk about the results and probably plan a surgery. But then there was a giant snowstorm, so that got canceled. And then I couldn't go this week because I had um, a new job that I got that I had to do orientation for. And then. I'm going this week. So, hopefully on Wednesday, the 6th, I believe, of March, I will schedule my surgery to find out if I officially have endometriosis or not. But in the meantime, um, I believe I do. I guess I don't know for sure. But I definitely feel like awareness should be brought to the disorder and people should know that, you know, if you're in a lot of pain because of your period to the point that you're skipping class, missing work, um, not leaving your bed, canceling plans, like, that's not normal. You shouldn't have to be in that much pain because of your period. Like, yeah, you're bleeding, but, I mean, there, there's some pain with it, I'm sure, but not to the extent of mine, not to the extent of, I mean, if you feel as though you need to go to the doctor because you're in enough pain, then there's something wrong. Like, if you, if you just, if you feel like you're the only one who's in a lot of pain in your friend group and they're all kind of like, why are you in so much pain? Like, it's just a period. It's not just a period then. There's probably something else going on. Like there's is there's so many issues that people can have. Like Enda's not the only one. I'm having surgery to find out if that's what it is. And if it's not, then I'm gonna keep going to the doctor and I'm gonna keep doing things to figure out what the heck is wrong because I shouldn't be in this much pain. And it's frustrating and I don't want to be in this much pain anymore. Have it, if you had the surgery, I want to know about it. Um, I probably have the laparoscopy um, or for the first one. I, I'm sure if I do end up like having endo, I'll probably try and do an excision surgery eventually in my life. Um, sorry this video was like super long and I just kind of ranted a lot of the time, but that's what this video was supposed to be for me, was for me to rant and talk about my experience and hopefully if you have something similar to mine and you've never gone to a doctor like yeah you you'll probably have doctors that aren't the best and will probably you'll not enjoy the experience but there's some I found one that she really cares about making sure she's thorough and asking the right questions and wanting to help me and she understands I'm in pain and <laughs> wants to help me not be in pain. So that's all I can ask. Like this video, share this video, comment your experience, comment how many times I said like as um in this video. <laughs> and then also comment like periods suck. Hashtag uteruses are not over uteruses because uteruses are not very nice.